Hey, AP Calc AB students, here I, whoop, oh, where am I? Where? Oh, up there in that corner. Here we go with our final video. I promise this is it. I don't know how many videos that we saw in unit six, especially if you include the ones from topics 11, 12, and 13 that are part of my BC curriculum, but I can pretty much tell you it's five more than a really a lot of videos. Five more than a lot. That's a lot. So we're going to go ahead and go out with a bang here. We're going to talk about a couple of very challenging integration problems, but I want to do something first. I want to reward everybody. If you've really hung in, you, you deserve an A+. I'm going to give you guys an A+. Nice work for just hanging in there. That doesn't mean you get an A+, for your calculus work, right? You still have to show show your teachers that, of course. But uh, I do mean that. I think that uh, hanging out and, 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 and watching a lot of these videos, really, it makes me feel like the time that I've spent putting them in, uh, the time into the videos uh, is hopefully paying off for you guys. So let's take a look. Uh, the integrals for uh, problems four and five might be some of the trickiest ones that you've seen. I think number four is downright evil. All right, so you're gonna take a look at this guy. Integrate dx over the square root of e to the 2x minus 1. From the, from the very get-go, it doesn't look like there's a whole heck of a lot that you can do. It just doesn't adhere to any integration rule that we've really discussed up until this point, especially for a, b. So one of the things that you might think about, maybe, maybe you're thinking that this looks like an inverse trig form. It's got that vibe to it. In other words, a student who might think that the u squared is like e to the 2x and the a squared is 1, you're not too far off track. u is going to equal e to the x power, right? If you just square root both of these sides, you basically raise to the half power, gets rid of the 2s. And of course, a is 1. But here is our problem, folks. Here is our problem. When you take the derivative of u, you get e to the x dx. And the problem is that there is no e to the x present up here to match. Even if there was an e to the x present, I'm not so sure what we would do because this doesn't match any inverse trig form that we've learned because the order is backwards here. If you're thinking arc sine, the 1 should have come first. If you're thinking arc secant, well, shouldn't there be something here like an e to the x or absolute value of e to the x, to be more precise, which is the same as e to the x? So it's like, what gives? What's going on with this problem? Well, stay tuned, because here's what you're going to do. If you solve for your dx, you would get du over e to the x. Doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Well, let's take a look at this. If we rewrite this integral, this dx is going to change to be du over e to the x. And then our denominator is the square root of, well, I suppose we could say that this is u squared minus a squared. But for right now, let's just keep it written the way it was, e to the 2x minus 1. I've got something up my sleeve here. I really do have something up my sleeve. All right, so what's going to happen now? Well, if we flip this around just a little bit, we multiply by the reciprocal. What we essentially have is du on top and an e to the x times the square root of e to the 2x minus 1 on bottom. Now, what does that mean? Well, technically, this e to the x is my u. And the e to the 2x is going to act as my u squared. And the 1 is going to act as my a squared. Let me write this the right way. And so you essentially have a familiar old friend staring at us in the eye. This is an arc secant form, everyone. And it didn't look like that at first. We had to manipulate this enough to get into that mode. Once we arrive here, we know that this is just 1 over a. Well, our a is going to be 1 times the arc secant. Let's spell that right. The arc secant of the absolute value of u over 1, right? 1 over 1 times the arc secant of the absolute value of u 
over 1 plus c. Well, if I just simply clean this up and then back substitute my u, which is e to the x, I could just write the answer like this. I could get by without writing absolute values around e to the x because e to the x is always going to be positive. And boom, there I go. A very tricky integration problem that uses an A-B technique but has a bit of a twist on it. Maybe something like may not be seen on the AP exam because of its complexity, but you never know. That's why we're going to share these with you. And our last problem. We've already talked about uh, rewriting the sum of two quotients uh, in a previous uh, video, previous problem. I just want to revisit this idea because it does tend to show up from time to time. And the basic issue here is that you look at this denominator and maybe your mind is thinking inverse sine, which is a good place to be. But the problem with that is you don't want this x to be in the top. You just want a constant to be there. Maybe your mind was looking at 4 minus x squared and said, hey, take that derivative. You get negative 2x to the first which is going to be fine as long as there's no constant being added or subtracted from the top and no, only an x up there. Well, we can make this work if we just simply say split this up at the plus sign and just use two different integration approaches. As I said before, this isn't the first time that we've seen this. I wanted to bring this back out to the forefront to remind you that it's probably one of the trickiest techniques that might potentially appear on the AP exam. So you got to be uh, ready for, for anything like this. But once again, you're going to let u be 4 minus x squared in this first integration. And the derivative of that, of course, is negative 2x dx. So basically, we're going to offset with this negative 1 over 2. And then we're just integrating 1 over the square root of u, also known as u to the negative half. Now, my personal preference is to finish this integral first. Don't be jumping back and forth between different integration techniques because that's no good for anybody. Just go ahead and work this one out. Simplify it as best you can. We back substitute the u, change the 1 half exponent to a radical, and then we have the first one taken care of. Now you can direct your attention over to this guy. Hopefully you realize that if a squared is 4, a would be 2. If u squared is x squared, u would be x. Therefore, the derivative of u is the derivative of x, nice and interchangeable. And basically, you've got yourself 100% tailor-made arc sine form ready to go. So in this particular case, the 2 will come out in front. You need to remember that arc sine does not have the 1 over a in front. So we can jump right to the answer and we put u over a or x over 2 here in that spot. And there you go, your solution to example 5, a pretty standard rewrite as the sum of two quotients. Now that we've seen many different integration possible forms, it's basically time to just build your confidence and efficiency. And I, I've said this many times, there is no other part of calculus that requires you to practice. Even my best students, I've had students that were top 10 that went to Ivy League schools that told me they had a hard time with integration until they really sat down and practiced it. So it's for everybody to practice. The good news is there are no more integration techniques that you're going to learn for Calc AB, and we'll get a long break until you start seeing new ones in your Calc 2, your Calc BC course, if you take that with me next year. Anyway, I hope this helps, and we certainly hope that you join us for our videos for our upcoming Unit 7 over differential equations. Until then, we'll see you next time.